And what I did, uh, every time I made a mistake, they became uh, painful mistakes, but with time, I realized that reflecting on those mistakes would give me gems. Um, what I would do is I'd say, why did I make that mistake? And I would learn from that mistake. Ray, great to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. So we are now in the eighth year of a bull market. How much more do we have to go? Oh, I think we're right in the middle of the cycle. I think that markets right now are priced, generally speaking, about right. So uh, if the economy continues to stay in that spot, great. Economy never does. We've accumulated quite a lot of debts in the economy. But we also have other uh, IOUs promised. In other words, everything from health care and pension reform and so on that are not counted as debts. We are in a um, nice temporary equilibrium within this longer term debt cycle. So what you're saying is that the political upheaval and seeming risk, not just in the United States, but everywhere in the world, is not something that investors should pay attention to or be concerned about. Uh, through my, all my years, there's always been that. There's been the Iraq war, there's been the this and that and the other thing. There's always that kind of nervousness. Uh, there is a North Korea, there is a this and that. There's always been those types of things. I think what is most important, perhaps, is the development of populism and its influences. But I I'm not saying that there can't be uh, uh, an event. I would never know whether there's an event and, and create an exogenous influence. So Usually, what, when you have those events, though, you know, you have the World Trade Center going down and you have all of those things. At the moment, uh, the Kennedy assassination, there are so many different things that have happened along those lines. Those are new, normally very sharp, quick events that the markets and the circumstances adapt to. So most likely, it won't come, the market uh, turmoil or, you know, big things won't primarily come from there. And talk about populism. You've called it one of the greatest threats to not just the United States, but the world right now. In history, it's been one of those situations that sometimes has led to democracies um, choosing to give up democracy in favor of uh, dictatorships. Um, I'm not saying, by the way, I'm not saying it's a very polite way of putting here. it. Uh, well, I'm, I, I, I'm not saying that about here. I just want to be clear. I'm not saying it about anywhere else. I'm not making any forecast of where it's going or any sort of parallels. I would say. Uh, Donald Trump, by and large, has been um, a populist, but um, the only reason I'm looking at it is to see how he uh, evolves or how in Europe, Le Pen or the Five Star Party in Italy or other pl places, how they evolve. Because in the 1930s, which is quite similar to a lot of the period that we've been through, economically, we had um, the wealth gap, we had um, large debts, we had zero interest rates, some things that are very economic. During those same types of period, we experienced more populism. Most countries became populist. And so it's very important to understand that. If you were to see that happen in the United States, Europe, and other things, you would have something that would be of concern because that would alter how the economic conditions work. So, so let me ask you to make a forecast because you've studied history now. I know how carefully you study history in the markets and, and understanding the future. Are you worried about the situation that we're in now globally and where we could go? I'm worried not over the next year or two. I'm worried about what the next downturn might look like. The effectiveness of monetary policy in stimulating an economy is less than it used to be because we are closer to zero. So think zero as an interest rate, you're closer to the floor. That's why Fed policy or central bank policies um, have to give a little bit more airing on the side of ha allowing stimulus, stimulation to occur, allowing the economy to pick up more. And do you feel that the Fed is being too aggressive? No, I think the Fed understands the circumstances and is being appropriately um, um, tightening. Happily, since President Trump was elected, there's been a big surge in confidence. Small business, big business. Does that matter? Will that translate to the economy and ultimately the stock market? Well, I think it. I think there's some things we know and th some things we don't know. We're now in a time where uh, we actually have to see what other kind of policy changes take place in the form of, let's say, fiscal policy. I don't think we're going to have a uh, radical change in the economy um, in terms of uh, policies. Wall Street seems particularly focused on taxes. Mm -hmm. How much tax reform? Well, are you tax, taxes and tax reform um, 
We don't know, of course, exactly what's going to be passed. There's a lot of uh, things, and we, there's a lot of conjecture, certain amount of speculation. That, I don't expect, is going to be the big driver of the markets, per se. It'll be bigger drivers of segments. Um, what is Mexico? Okay, what does that mean for the dollar? Those types of things. You've had an amazing success story with Bridgewater. You started the company in your kitchen, I believe, 40 years ago. You built it into the most successful hedge fund in the world. When you started, how did you learn to invest, and how did your investment strategy change over time? Uh, well, I learned, I, I, learned, I learned from my mistakes. In other words, my instinct is, um, you know, you go there and you place a bet. Um, I've had winners and I've had losers. And what I did, uh, every time I made a mistake, they became uh, painful mistakes, but with time, I realized that reflecting on those mistakes would give me gems. Um, what I would do is I'd say, why did I make that mistake? And I would learn from that mistake. And I'd write down a rule. So what was helpful for me is I put that rule, principles, these principles, I wrote these principles down. Those principles that I wrote down, I then put into algorithms, in other words, equations. And what I learned by being able to do that is by, if I took my decision criteria, those principles, and then I tested them back through time, I gained a perspective that was fantastic. I could test them in um, back 100 years. I could test them in different countries. And I would learn how those rules worked. And I put, by putting all those rules together and then how, having these algorithms, the computer could replicate my thinking, but it could actually think better than I could because it, what it would do is it would take, it, it could process more information, it could process it faster, and it could process it less emotionally. So it was like having a GPS that was next to me while I was also making my decisions, like you're driving in a car and you have both operating. And to have that next to me was, um, you know, invaluable. It would learn, I would learn, and together we built that. You made all these mistakes and learned from them without going bankrupt, which is what happens to a lot of investors. Or did you go bankrupt a few times in that period and then come back? No, I, uh, no but I had, one, I had one crash, 1982. I did calculations that um, um, American banks had lent much more money to emerging <laughs> countries than those countries were going to pay, pay back. And, um, and I, those calculations were very controversial. Those contra convers uh, calculations were right. Um, the countries, uh, Mexico in August of 1982 defaulted. A number of countries happened. We had this big debt crisis. I thought the economy was going, uh, and the stock market would go down a lot. The stock economy and stock market went up a lot. I, um, I was so, um, I lost money for me. I lost money for my clients. Uh, I was so broke that I had to borrow $4,000 from my dad. This was very, very painful. But it turned out to be the best thing that ever happened to me because it gave me, um, it gave me a change in mindset. It gave me a realization, essentially. I went from a state of mind thinking, I know, to a state of mind of thinking, how do I know? Um, and, and then trying, to, and it gave me an open-mindedness. It gave me a fear that balanced with my, hum, with my aggressiveness. But the most important thing that I learned is that kind of that fear and the humility in order to balance those bets. So you have just a remarkably inspiring American story. It's from nothing to just unimaginable success. Jamie Dimon earlier this week said, look, there's a problem in this country. It's a great country, but there's a problem. He's right. You agree with that? Oh, totally. In many parts of this country, we don't create a bottom. There's no bottom. In other words, there's no minimum level of acceptable education. There's no minimum level of acceptable circumstances in some places. There's a tragedy that we're losing, in many ways, our human infrastructure in lots of those places. If you look at, um, my, my wife is uh, very much involved in education in the worst parts of Connecticut. This is a, something that's particularly important to her. 22% of the students in Connecticut are either disengaged or disconnected. Now you think not only is that a human tragedy in terms of those kids, but that's also going to be a ter terrible social tragedy. What will they end up doing? How will it be? And do you think that's different than the infra infrastructure that allowed or helped you to do what you do or others? Yes, who I was lucky in the sense is that I had parents who cared about me. I went to school. Um, I, I was able to have that kind of infrastructure and, I, and in this wonderful country 
that allowed me to have those kinds of opportunities and, 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 and inspirations, you know, when you look at people and that they could do those great things. So there was a dream that can happen, okay? So, yeah, you need hope, you need family, you need infrastructure, you need certain basic things that I had the benefit of having and that a lot of the population doesn't have the benefit of having. Ray, wonderful to have you. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you.